Hello again, everybody. This is the third video in the Plotly sequence for plotting cool stuff in Python. And here we go. All right, so same as the previous two videos, I'm going to show you a plot from matplotlib, and then we're going to build that same type of plot in Plotly. And what you're going to observe is the exact same thing. You're going to observe that the code is maybe a little bit longer to write, but in the long run, we get a much better plot. So this is the guy we want. We want y equals x to the n for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, all on the same axis, so all on top of each other. So in matplotlib, I've done this with a for loop. Um, actually, I'm going to do it with a for loop in Plotly anyway. Um, but it, notice I had to do something a little bit goofy with the legend. Go ahead and put me on pause and read through this if you want to. Um, if you're familiar with matplotlib. And let's go with plotly. So I'm going to import uh, plotly.graph underscore objects as geo. Technically, in this document, I already have it. But I like to always start with my import so that it's clear what code I'm writing. OK, I'm going to do x equals. Let's be fair and get the exact same domain as we did before, or as we did on the matplotlib. OK, so I've got a lin space from 0 to 1. Uh, so I've got 50 points from 0 to 1. Okay, 50 equally space points, linearly space. All right, now I'm going to do a for loop, same as I did before, for n in range 1 to 6. But inside this for loop, I want to populate a plotly plot. So to do that, I need to first define the plotly plot, so graphic objects.figure. And then inside my for loop, so That defines the figure. Inside my for loop, I'm going to fig.add underscore trace. And then I'm going to add scatter type graphics objects. So x equals the x domain that I did, and y equals x to the end. OK? And now I wanted my legend to show up nicely, so I'm going to get that in a second. But let's end the loop and just do fig.show and see what it does. OK, so over here, I got trace 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because it added four traces and it didn't give a name to each one of them. But notice it's the exact same plot, but I've also got all of the beautiful tools that I have in Plotly. I can do side-by-side -side comparisons. Ooh, cool, it's bringing, the, um, it's bringing the labels along for the ride. I can zoom in if I want to. I can move the axes around if I want to. All of that good stuff is still here like every plot they plot. So let's make the names show up. So I'm going to do uh, name equals an x to the. Now that's a string, so I'm going to add the string n to the end of that. And let's just see what happens. Now I've got x to the 1. Notice I didn't have a space there, so let's squeeze that space inside the string x to the 1, x to the 2, x to the 3, and so on. And if I do my pairwise comparison, all of the comparisons come along for the run. So you can still build plotly style plots with for loops, just like I did over here in matplotlib. And all you're doing is just adding a trace inside of the for loop. So this is pretty slick when you want to add plots that are on top of each other that have kind of a predictable sort of pattern. And I'll see you in the next video.